looking at an important uh, elements that are common in the machineries. So I'm going to look at one single link which is rotating, right? So I'm going to look at what one single link. So this point is a hinge point. We know typically we represent schematically we represent like this, and I have hinged at this. So this bar length is say R. And the length of this bar is R. So this point is P at the end. So now if this is rotating, this bar is rotating because what is happening? This is hinged. So this bar cannot translate. It cannot come out of this point O, but this can rotate because it is hinged. So this rotation is what is uh, taking place because of that you have an angular velocity. So you will have an angular velocity here and you will have accordingly. If this angular velocity is not constant, then there will be an acceleration, angular acceleration. If this is constant, then alpha is equal to zero. So this is what is happening. So if I consider this position at that instant from here is by an angular position theta. So theta also is varying. So this is theta and it's going with an angular velocity and the angular velocity magnitude is increasing at the rate of uh, alpha. So you have this. So now uh, what is that you have to understand is the point on this link, which is P here. What is this point velocity acceleration that you have to understand? So this point velocity will be perpendicular to this bar. So it will be always directed like this. Because this point as this link is rotating, what is the path it is following is it is rotating. So the point P will go in a circular path, right? It will be rotating like this. In this part. So if this goes, so this is what is the velocity VP, the direction. So how do you relate that? This velocity VP is given by R times this omega. R times this omega. So remember this relation. So if I take a midpoint, what will happen? Velocity. If I take a midpoint, the velocity will be this much only. It is not that so midpoint is say here pq this point so vq is going to be this distance is r by 2 into omega so that is how you should relate so if you look at uh, uh, the point as it comes to this point this point is the point o that is not translating that doesn't show any rotation so here linear velocity is zero so the variation of velocity now of a rotating link here is linear, reducing. As P is going uh, the farthest point in this, so that has got a maximum linear velocity, whereas any other point on the link will have linear velocity, which is smaller than that this way. And that would be obtained by the position of that point from the center of rotation multiplied by omega. So remember this relation, that's one thing. And then and the second thing is, uh, what is the acceleration of that point P? So acceleration will be always on the curvature side that we say, or the rotation side. So I will have my acceleration vector, something like this. That's my AP at an angle to the tangent. At an angle to the tangent. So now I can resolve this acceleration into two components. One is going along with that. Another one is coming in this direction. So this acceleration component is what is called the ANP. That is centripetal component of acceleration or normal component acceleration. This acceleration is what is uh, called AT, tangential component of acceleration of point P. So now what is this ATP? So ATP is given by R times the angular acceleration. R times the angular acceleration alpha, whereas A N P is given by V P square by R. V P squared by R because we have seen in curvilinear translation uh, acceleration of the particle. How do you put V squared by rho? You have written. So here this is that point. See, though the rigid body is rotating uh, with respect to point O, if I look at the point on the rigid bar. OPP is a point if I look at the point P is uh, undergoing what curvilinear translation that is circular motion. 
Point Q is going what? Curvilinear translation that is in a circular path. So any point on the bar other than point O would follow a circular path. So the paths of the points in this bar all are concentric circles. So if you look at one point on the bar, that is translation of the point. If you look at as a bar as a whole, that is rotation. So bar as a whole, when you look at that is rigid body kinematics. Point in the bar, if you look at that is particle kinematics. So that's very interesting. So that is how this relationship that you understand. So the tangential component of acceleration of that point P is simply R times alpha. And this is so this relationship that you should remember. Right. This relationship that you should remember. So you may also write this. This or there's nothing bad. D omega by dt into r. So d omega by dt is what is alpha. That's what we define. So omega is d theta by dt. Alpha is d omega by dt. And uh, you can also write this as d square theta by dt square. So these all are correct. These are the definitions uh, you should remember. <coughs> okay, this is one important case. The next case is that let us look at uh, uh, a pulley which is now going to be rotating at this point. Center is hinged. So this is rotating. As this is rotating, a cable which is wound around that would have uh, other end connected with the block. So this is block A, this is point O. So when this is rotating, so this is of radius R. So this is going to be rotating. So either this is a drum you say or a pulley you say, if this is rotating in this direction with omega, then this block A will be translating up. So the translation of this block is dictated by rotation of this pulley. Or if this is translating down, the translation of this block is dictating rotational motion of this pulley. So one motion depends on the other motion. So you can also call this as a dependent motion or they are related motion. To each other, not relative motion, related motion to each other. So <clears throat> now, what is that important here? You have to uh, note is that let us look at this point now. Is a common point. So this cable, which is unwinding or which is winding in this case, is at this point contact. Say this is point P. So this is the common point on the cable as well as on the pulley. If I consider at this point, uh, if I have to relate my XP. Uh, sorry, uh, not XP is my, this is my origin. So I have a point. Uh, uh, no, sorry, XJ. So I, I, how do I re represent the translation motion of this A by its position XA, VA, and AA? So now, what is my XA that I want to represent? That would be related here by R times omega. That's all. That's what I wanted to. R times T times. Omega. R times theta. So whatever is this radius, because that is the contact point, tangential point, as this winding, this goes up. So R times theta angular displacement will give me what is this translation equivalence, right? <clears throat> and similarly, velocity of point A would be R times omega. Acceleration of point A would be, so this acceleration will be acceleration in this direction. So acceleration in this direction is what? ATP. That's very important. And that's what is same as here. ATP. And that's, you know, how do you get this? R times alpha. Right? This is important. So this is one relation. Right? If I now any time, uh, for any uh, time T, what are these quantities uh, if I have to get? I can write uh, in this way. So what is the, by the way, what is the velocity of this point VP? Velocity of this point VP? That's going to be R times omega. What is the displacement of this point, uh, um, distance traveled by this point P? That is R times theta at any instant. So uh, uh, suppose after, after 30 degrees, what is the position? Is what is this? So the point P, the displacement, now we don't call it as a displacement, distance along the path. So SP is equal to R theta. So VP is equal to R omega. And similarly, what is acceleration of P? 
it's not only ATP. The acceleration of P vector is not only this. That is ATP plus ANP. That's important. So that would be directed somewhat in this direction. So let me put that. So acceleration of P somewhere here. This is acceleration of P. But I will have that component here as ATP and ANP. So where ANP modulus is VP squared by R here. And ATP, you know, that's R1 alpha, right? So this is what is that uh, your understanding must be. And then the third case, let's look at uh, when I have two gears are mating or two gears are assumed to be two friction wheels. So I have one wheel hinged here, which can rotate, say, clockwise. And there is a mating gear or uh, that mating gear is represented by its pitch circle. So these are the two pitch circles of the two gears and they are of friction uh, uh, gears, you can say, friction contact, you can say. That means there's no slippage. So this is the common point now, P. So now as this rotates, and this will be rotating like this. If this rotates counterclockwise, this will rotate clockwise because they are pairing externally. So you also have a gear train as a chapter separately uh, in your me mechanics of machine scores. At that time, you are going to have one chapter, one module only to study about gears, gear terminology, how do you define uh, uh, you know, on the profile of the gear? There is something called involute profile and cyclotor profile and something called uh, law of gearing. Uh, there is a pressure angle between uh, mating gear. So there are so many aspects that we are going to study. After understanding that, you will see when you have a number of gears and dimension, what are their influence and how do you go about design of gearbox for your automotive system? There, it can be extended. So gear is an important element. So mechanical engineers mean you see gear is a fascinating element. So that uh, gears now are uh, represented here of two mating gear by their pitch circles. So that means there is a common point here. So now if you look at the relationship between that, so if this is gear A and this is gear B, if I say I can write these relationships, this P is this. So the displacement of this P common displacement of this P would be now like I have a cable coming out of this like that if I say uh, then it will be uh, R A theta A that's equal to R B theta B then only the condition uh, holds good and similarly if I have to look at velocity of this point that is R A omega A that's equal to R B omega B. The RA is greater than RB. That means what? When it is to be constant, uh, omega A will be smaller than omega B. That maintains. So the smaller the gear will have higher speed than that of the larger gear. That's what is the default. A simple gear train pair, it is called. So if this is happened to be the driver, you'll make this shaft rotating higher speed than this. If this happens to be the driver, you get a speed reduction here. So accordingly, this is the basic concept that has been used in uh, going for uh, power transmission or motion transmission and so on. So if I have to get uh, speed more from this speed, that what I will do? I will have to have a smaller gear. So this rotate one revolution, this may rotate three revolution. That's what is uh, the principle of gear and that is essentially coming out of this relationship. So similarly, you can represent as this, this, this acceleration will be different here. Right again, in the same way acceleration one will be pointing here, another will be pointing in this direction. But if you look at the tangential component of acceleration, that is ATP of this, that would be given by RA times alpha A equals RB times alpha B. So these are the important relationship uh, you will see uh, uh, while solving some problems through. <clears throat> so this all uh, on one side, uh, keeping it, we will continue solving some problem now, looking at um, uh, an example problem. See, you know now uh, if it is purely rotating, it's a rotation. So if a block is attached, it's rotating, it is dictated, <coughs> and the translation of the block is dictated. So you would be able to solve some problem groups like that. If you look at it in a textbook, there can be an example problem. I'm not going to solve this problem, uh, example problem. Uh, 
like I have a compound pulley. What do you mean by compound pulley? I will have two pulleys uh, which are fastened together. That means I will have two radii in the pulley. And these two do not have a relative motion. That's uh, one compact pulley. One is the bigger uh, uh, radius, another one is smaller. And they are welded together. They together will rotate. The rotation will be together. So if that is so, you look at that. I have here in this inner pulley a block attached. And an outer pulley, there is a block attached. See, this is going to be interesting. So this is A, this is B, and this is pulley C, if I say. The motion of A is known. Motion of B can be found out because the motion of A and this rotation can be connected and the, the rotation motion of pulley can be used to find out here. So like that, uh, if we are given motion of A, we are asked to find motion of B, we are expected to predict motion, rotation motion of, uh, of this uh, um, double pulley. So such problem that you can see in the uh, um, textbook. Maybe I will post the data for you to work out. So if I uh, look at this, A is translating down with uh, data given. What is that? Is the acceleration of A is given by 0 0.3 times T. Look at here. I'm not giving constant acceleration. The acceleration is varying. So I cannot use those uh, uh, motion under gravity or motion uniformly accelerated motion equation. You forget it. So integration is required to find out what is your velocity and further integration is required to find out what is its displacement. You have to, the moment you see acceleration as uh, t, then you should remember this a should be dv by dt or d squared x by dt squared. So you should remember that and v is equal to dx by dt. So these formulas only should be used. So the that would be, uh, be leading to a calculus where you can use uh, integration in this case because a is given. If a, v is given, you can differentiate to get a, integrate to get position. So that is, we should be conversant of doing that process. And we have uh, experienced that in constructing motion curves problem, right? Yeah. So now the given data is the acceleration of this block a t is given as this. Uh, and at t is equal to 0, v a naught. So it's not starting from rest at our point of observation t equals 0. The subscript 0 refer to t is equal to 0 at t equals 0. This has got some initial velocity that is 0.5 meter per second. That's given. So now what is that you have to do? Find at t equals 5 seconds. t equals 5 seconds. What does xb, vb, all 5 and a b at 5 so these all three that you have to find out so that's a question all right so i leave it to you to answer this question now let's go to an another example problem example problem to today's class to solve so this is very interesting problem now where